Shoppers who use on-site search are three to five times more likely to convert. Equipping this powerful sales channel with even stronger technology is vital. Introducing Clevu, the leading end-to-end -end discovery platform for Magento. Brands use our AI and NLP-powered on-site search, visual merchandising, personalization, and category navigation solutions. We work with some of the world's largest Magento brands. Join them to give your customers the data-driven shopping experience they deserve. Good morning and welcome to Meet Magento New York Solutions Track. Uh, unfortunately, this year we can't be doing this in person, but nevertheless, we've got an amazing track planned for you on all the solutions around Magento. To kick things off first today, we're going to have Dave Hubert, who is a senior solution architect at Clevu. Uh, a little bit about Dave. For over two decades, he's worked intimately with some of the largest international brands in managing and developing their enterprise e-commerce and best-in-class custom sites. His proactive approach to technology provides simple solutions for complex systems while also evolving Clevu's product offerings. And today he's going to be speaking to us a little bit about personalization. So without further ado, here's Dave. Thank you, Talesh. And hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. We are, of course, going to talk about the strength of personalization and how you can harness customer data to deliver exceptional on-site search navigation results. I'm Dave Hubart, Solution Architect at Clevu. I'm also a certified Magento Solution Specialist. I've been working online since, uh, well, since there's uh, almost since there's been an online. <laughs> but in our, uh, our short time today, we're going to focus on effectively utilizing and integrating on-site search into your overall personalization strategy. We're going to talk about why it's important to consider personalized search by touching some on some of the benefits. We're going to review some use cases and strategies to attack them. And finally, we're going to round things out with a brief summary and implementation options and where to find additional resources. And then we'll get to answer any of your questions. So what is personalization? It's defined as the action of designing or producing something to meet someone's individual requirements. Now, the key words here are the individual requirements. Now, in this challenging year of 2020, I'm sure we have all experienced personalization with your go-to video streaming service of choice. For me, it's Netflix. And uh, as an example, Netflix will promote or pick films for me that fit my interests or my viewing history. They don't show me the entire library at once. Now, last count, there was 287 films in the horror genre, but only 75 of those are listed in my profile as my picks. And even then, I'm still having trouble deciding on something to watch this Halloween season. So imagine a shopper's challenge to sift through products with an exponential number of options available. How do we distill thousands of contending products to find relevant items at a customer by customer basis? And how can we take basic personalization principles and apply them to e-commerce in a way that makes sense? Well, you start with the search box. Forrester Research has found that 43% of visitors to a site go immediately to the search box. And shoppers that use search are motivated buyers and two to three times more likely to purchase. E-commerce consumers are growing less and less likely to browse a catalog or utilize a site map. The search box provides an invaluable opportunity for direct interaction between the merchant and the customer. Now, it takes a bit of dialogue in order to identify what products best meet someone's individual requirements. And the search box is the website's best and most effective means for a customer to enter the conversation. The search box. A search allows a customer to enter specifics of what they're looking for directly into the system. Using Clevu's advanced natural language processing, the semantics of almost any phrase can be deconstructed to reveal intent, context, and preferences. Using error tolerance and rich language dictionaries, even misspellings and compound words can be accounted for. Engines that rely on term match alone are quickly becoming antiquated. But when a full spectrum of search detail is not provided, 
Search terms and phrases can seem very general and non-specific. Even just one additional adjective can help to filter by the corresponding attribute. But search phrases alone may not be enough dialogue to truly deliver a personalized result. So how can we imply attributes that generate an accurate context on a customer by customer basis? The first step is to learn about the customer. In a physical shop, the customer can verbally express to the in-store assistant spe specifics like color or size or a preference for a particular brand. For e-commerce, the site needs to look at any data provided by the customer and ask itself a few questions. Like, is the customer registered with the store? If so, what information has been recorded? Have they made any previous purchases? What items are they currently looking at or returning to? And for anonymous customers, this last point may be all you have to work with. The answers to these questions create living profiles with the store. A profile begins after just the first few clicks. These profiles evolve with the customer and the attributes within them can be harnessed to determine which products are most suitable within the context of their shopping. Registered customer attributes, purchase history, as well as real-time browsing should be major contributions to these profiles. Your products also have profiles. In addition to the store's configuration of product attributes and categories, clicks, purchases, as well as applied merchandising rules all contribute to the product profile. Together, these elements make it possible to capitalize on the dialogue your site has with the customers and create exclusive experiences. As more data becomes available, personalization just gets more and more accurate and the relationship strengthens between the site and the customer. In recent A-B tests, our findings confirm a natural increase in shopper confidence resulting in increased brand trust and loyalty. We see higher retention rates, increased conversions, with an overall revenue increase, all attributed to personalized search. In a customer survey, 67% said it's important for brands to automatically adjust content based on their current context. <clears throat> Just like in a real world conversation, the virtual dialogue must also have a seamless and graceful flow. We don't want any awkward moments, right? So let's talk about a few ways to engage with customers at a personal level. The first is to study the shopping pattern and have the ability to adjust the experience based on real time challenge or changes in the user behavior. So we're gonna go through a quick example to illustrate this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's say we run a music supply e-commerce store. We sell all kinds of instruments and all the supporting accessories. An anonymous site visitor clicks on a link to the guitars category and begins building their profile. They are first shown guitars based on a combination of your merchandising rules, our collaborative search intelligence, and they browse to find a few specific types of vintage electric guitars. Their profile, their profile continues to build in greater detail. Upon returning to the guitar's main category, vintage electric guitars are now boosted to the top of the product listing page over modern electric guitars, over bass guitars, and over acoustic guitars. So what if they then search for guitar strings? Because we know the customer's immediate interest in vintage electric guitar, they are likely communicating an interest in accessories that fit similar guitars. We know what kind of guitar strings fit the guitars in the profile being built. We have set up merchandising rules for the most popular strings and the brands we prefer to sell. So in this conversation, we're going to mention all of this to the customer and present a product assortment with something likely to continue the customer's interest. You know, bingo, now we're talking, right? So we've tailored this experience in real time by analyzing the common attributes of the shopping pattern. The experience becomes personal, almost exclusive. And it's important to point, to point out that personalization is not about filtering out the products. 
It's about boosting products that are found to be in better alignment with the customer's individual requirements or preferences. The ability to personalize using patterns alone is a great way to build trust for a new customer acquisition. There may be times when you already know a lot about a customer. The profile may be mature and very active, and these traits can be applied immediately to be used for search personalization. 91% of customers are more likely to shop with brands who recognize, remember, and provide relevant offers and recommendations. So the next more in-depth way to continue the personalization dialogue is to build on known preferences or attributes previously expressed by the customer. We'll illustrate this with another example. An e-commerce hardware store that sells a wide variety of products. Customer A is a professional electrician and a repeat customer. He's come back to the hardware store to work on his new project. Customer B is a plumber, also a returning and loyal customer. Both are logged in and the system has identified each of them, maybe with a personal welcome back message or other branding that you've configured, but we're gonna to stick to the topic of search. Customer A goes to the search bar and enters the word tape. Now, what kind of tape is he looking for? Well, we could present hundreds of varieties of tape based on best selling or sorted by price, but that's not really personalized. We know he's in the electrical industry and we've also reviewed his recent purchase history and assimilated common attributes that, that boost electrical tape over duct tape, over painter's tape, or other tape varieties. And we can take in, into consideration the same scenario with customer B. They search for tape. We know that customer B is a plumber. And again, we can take into consideration his previous history. He does not normally use electrical tape. Instead, he needs specialized waterproof Teflon thread tape. The personalized search intelligence will recognize this distinction and relevant products will be assembled and boosted to the landing page. In either case, a product such as painter's tape doesn't clutter the top results with products this customer has never considered. There's no need for these customers to provide all the product characteristics in order to be presented with an accurate match for the search term tape, nor did they need to, br to browse an extensive menu hierarchy. It's like the system says, we got you. So it's important to stay in context with this. For example, a customer, a customer clicks through women's red leather shoes and then immediately browses over to a category of jackets. Well, that will not automatically infer that they prefer red leather jackets unless the customer has demonstrated a pattern or history of that relationship, or the merchant has aligned attributes of both products, like perhaps the shoes are a matching accessory to the jacket or vice versa. It's worth noting that the pattern and preference approaches we just reviewed are not mutually exclusive. They can be used in harmony to best enrich the experience and more effectively deliver accurate relevancy. So let's go beyond the on-site search for a minute. Remembering the customer is a big part of personalization. People like to be remembered. Uh, to that, the customer profile and the aligned product relevance can be used outside of on-site search. Cart abandoned emails are very popular, but have you considered search abandonment emails? We're talking about personalized product suggestions based on search history sent via a triggered email. You can also use the search history and pattern data to remarket your customers through social media or other advertising channels. An immediate personalization solution can be accomplished using the Clevu Magento extension. This is available in the Magento marketplace and registration is quick and easy. The personalization add-on allows for real-time shopping patterns to be implemented automatically. Known preferences of the customers can be adapted using a few lines of JavaScript. And of course, the whole thing is A-B test compatible. Another option is using our Clevu API. This allows your development team to be in full control of how personalization strategies are applied. 
We have an extensive knowledge base of support articles and guides available on the Clovu website. Now with that said, assistance for any of the implementation methods we mentioned today are available. The links will be provided with this presentation as well as on the Clovu's website. Our knowledge base is available at support.clovu.com. You may also direct your technical team to our developer portal at developers.clovu.com. Or please schedule a session with us. We'd love to discuss in detail how we can further assist with your personalization and search strategy. So some of the takeaways from, from today. Understand that personalization is driving a relevant dialogue between a consumer and a brand. Shoppers that use search are motivated and two to three times more likely to convert. Relevancy and personalization build trust and loyalty. And shoppers feel more confident with brands that recognize, remember, and provide them relevant offers. Search personalization is applied using two complementary approaches, shopping patterns and history and known preferences. Personalization is not about filtering products, but rather boost one or more types of products that better align with your customer's preferences. And finally, harness your search data to fuel personalization within a holistic marketing strategy. Well, this concludes this presentation, and I thank you so much for your time and attention. Talesh, back to Lesh, back to you. Uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, thank you, Dave. That was, uh, that was pretty, uh, interesting. pretty interesting. I see no questions right now, but I do have a question for myself. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> um, so here's the thing. Is there, is there any sort of personalization on the level that if you know a customer has already purchased the product where it does not show up on their recommendations any further? Because I think the current state of personalization has gotten to a point where it it's pretty dialed in to what you need. Correct. But sometimes it keeps going past the purchase date. Um, is that something you know Clevu is looking at, or is 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 a is it something that Clevu can solve for um, customers? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, within our with API, there are parameters in which you can include for the purchase history product IDs. And in that case, we can take those into, consider into consideration, not only to uh, take out the common attributes and apply those as boosting parameters for relevancy, but also uh, not return those same product IDs, as you're saying, with the results. So you, if, I, if, if something is purchased frequently, we're not necessarily going to send that exact item back in that, that personalization query, and unless you want to, and, and all that can be configured as well. So we ha we do have the tools and the parameters that can accommodate for that scenario. Okay, sounds great. Um, okay, so now the questions are coming in. Um, we have a question from Darren Ortsman, and he says this, it sounds like the personalization can cut both ways, uh, like the tape or the red clothing example. How do you audit this at scale? How do at scale? No, audit, how do you audit it at scale? Oh, how, how do you audit at scale? Well, you, the, the real trick is to align the customer attributes with the product attributes. So if you have, uh, uh, if, you, if you are collecting customer attributes about, the, uh, about your customers and you have attributes that are aligned with your products and you're making that, that correlation, then the scale is almost, you know, it's automatic for that, that product or that, that product category. So that then when you make the query, you send those parameters in with it. And then Clevo's artificial intelligence will take that and use that as the boosting mechanism to identify what products would be relevant based on that attribute. Okay. That, I hope that answers the question. Yeah. If, uh, if not, Darren, contact me. We can, we'll, we'll go, we can go further. Or shoot a follow-up question in the, uh, the chat or the, the question section. Um, I've I've kind of gotten a hold of the entire Q and A section right now, so um, uh, we have one more question from an anonymous user. Okay, <laughs> we'll run with it. Um, so anonymous user is curious to know what your uh, suggestions would be for moving into twenty twenty one. I guess when it comes to personalization, what what your vision is for uh, 
the the most I, I'm I'm assuming they're looking to find out what do you think are the most important parts of personalization that would come to be in 2021? Mm-hmm. Yes, it's a very good question. Um, well, I see it already. Uh, the momentum's already going, right? Okay. And the way I see it is 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 this alignment of your your customer attributes with the product attributes, and and having that dialogue back and forth, being able to assimilate the uh, information that's put uh, into the search box and di- and dissect that and learn from that, learn what your customers are searching for, and apply and be able to then apply those those attributes to uh, the customers and the products in a way that's uh, on a higher scale. Things like uh, maybe certain demographics. You, if a customer registers with your store or they make a purchase, they put a shipping address in, that sort of thing, you know what region of the, of the country that they live in. You can then tie that to uh, different aspects of your product line, uh, heavier coats, lighter jackets, this sort of thing, and tie that directly with that demographic. So I just see like being very creative with the, that context as the way to evolve this personalization. Um, yeah, sounds great. Uh, we have one question from the chat, um, and I guess Ford Crane works with you. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so Matilla, Matilla asked, "What extensions do you recommend for personalization?" And Ford chimed in and said, "We recommend Clever." So <laughs> <laughs> a fantastic question and a great answer. <laughs> so, uh, I guess for Matilla, in case she joined late. Uh, it's available in the Magento um, Connect. Uh, yeah. That's sorry, correct. Yeah. That's correct. We have a, a Magento extension. Uh, yeah. And uh, Clevo itself is platform agnostic. However, the Magento right. extension does all the heavy lifting and integration for you in a simple install. Right. Um, that said, um, personalization is an add-on. It's not It's not a default thing because right. it's something that you, you request. You ask for it, we enable mm-hmm. it, and you can get started with it uh, immediately. And then right. if you choose to then evolve it into uh, the more advanced levels like we've been talking about uh, mm-hmm. in this QA session, um, we have we have guides. We'd love to talk to you and, and be able to guide you in that direction on how you can uh, make those configurations. Um, I'm assuming since it's um, multi-platform, it, it also can use the Magento API or there is the ability for it to interact with Magento in that in that format. That's correct. The extension yeah. itself, uh, we work with a combination of Clevu's API and Magento's mm-hmm. API. That's okay. how we that's how we do our product communication. So, so should should a merchant be coming out with a new PWA Studio build and the entire Magento backends all GraphQL? Um, that's something uh, you'd be able to integrate with. What's what's the current situation with the Clevu extension and PWA? PWA? Yeah, not, yeah, not a problem. We have um, uh, a new JavaScript library. It mm-hmm. should fit perfectly into that scenario, and that that will uh, basically it's the interface for the API. Uh, could, you know, again, the API is is open, and and any developer mm-hmm. can tap in to use it uh, as they like using a JSON or XML uh, right. response for that. But uh, yeah, it's 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 fully equipped and ready. Uh, oh, that's cool. Um, more okay. questions are coming in. Uh, so another another anonymous user. What are the benefits of Clevo's uh, NLP machine learning over Magento's native search tech? So uh, maybe explain what's NLP um, for those who don't know the acronym first and then jump for into sure. the question. For sure. Again, good question. The NLP is natural language processing. Uh, and Clevo's advantage is, is, is that it learns, it's machine learning, and, and automatic en- enrichment is included with the service. So. What that means is uh, we can take a long query, as I demonstrated uh, it earlier in the in the slide, and break it down and be able to understand the the, the semantics of that of that query, uh, understand the context, uh, the categories. Uh, we can predict filters, and as well as we can apply those to uh, a language dictionary and uh, synonyms that can then you know tie together. And use that machine learning to, as relevancy, and we can. And our system is built to learn from that. So what we learn is we present you uh, ten products, and it, what products you interact with lets our system learn that that was a good match for that breakdown for that formula, and the system gets stronger and stronger and stronger with with that interaction. 
So that would be like a, a, the a direct advantage over something like Magento's built-in search, which would be more of a term matching type type scenario. Cool. Okay, one more question. Uh, I mean, the questions are coming in hard and fast right now. Oh my gosh. Um, so <laughs> you said you wanted them, right? Well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Deval Shah uh, asked, uh, how much of personalization is dependent on PII, personal identifiable information? With the wide array of different laws around the world, is there any audit features built in, I am assuming, for those countries? Sure. You, it, the personalization aspect itself isn't isn't constrained to that that personal information. It's mm -hmm. it's really in an abstract sense, uh, whatever the attribute is, right? Uh, in the example we used with the plumber and the electrician, there's nothing really, you know, there's no sensitive information about me being a plumber or an electrician by trade. However, right. that was just an example of one attribute that could be used then to to boost relevancy and make and make the uh, result personal to the in, to the electrician industry. Um, so it's it's kind of up to your local guidelines and up to you as an individual merchant, what you want to share, uh, mm -hmm. but the tool set's there that you share the attribute at, or the, the, the product history, and we can then extract the, the common attributes from the products and whatever you send by the customer, and then we can make the relevancy there. So you really don't have to send any customer information at all if you want to stick with just the product history. You can also go with the uh, direct shopping pattern, which is a real time, mm -hmm. a real time evolving uh, a mechanism. So that as they as they click products, those characteristics of the products are used to fuel the results on the next page and on the next on the next search. So that that really is very abstracted from the customer data specifically. Okay, um, I, I guess uh, I, I get a follow up question for myself. Please. Um, since I'm very much involved in security and um, a little bit more on the privacy side of things, there's been pushes by um, Firefox and various other organizations who advocate for customer privacy on the web to start um, moving to a system where you get, um, you know, collated data as opposed to personally identifiable data. Where um, so instead of, of you know, you, you're pulling information about a person. Mm -hmm. Firefox says, you know, here's a couple tags and you could send, yeah, you could respond to those tags as opposed to you pulling the data yourself. Do you see the increased push um, for, for uh, tighter privacy on behalf of Firefox and the EFF and various organizations will be affecting uh, the way personalization works. Like, how how do you see that that cycle of pushing back on privacy uh, affect personalization going forward? Mm -hmm. um, well, within the, within the context of of this search, uh, the search itself, um, the personal information uh, is is not stored like on the browser level or at the cookie level or anything like that in terms of what we would need that would be sensitive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just if it's if you click on a pair of shoes and we and we hold that product ID, there's nothing real sen sensitive or insecure about the product ID for a pair of shoes uh, right. within the realm of say you know Firefox as a, as a browser. So um, the information sent back and forth um, is encrypted, and again, you don't have to send sensitive information about a customer back and forth to to make it personalized at this level. It just right. has to be some some sort of attribute that would is would correlate to the product itself. Um, and if you chose not to go at that customer level, you can use collaborative data uh, that we've that's been collected through other clicks and purchases and use mm -hmm. that to, uh, you know, it would be personalized, but it wouldn't be at that customer by customer basis. Okay, cool. Um, so, I guess that's, the, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say so. So the information that that you choose to include for the information mm -hmm. for to be personalized is really at your discretion and at your right. your local guidelines and how, what you feel comfortable with. Awesome. Well, I think that's it for time. Thank you so much for your presentation, and uh, for everyone else, uh, just hold on. We're going to be switching out soon, and we'll be back with the next presentation very soon. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks.